Hi, my name is Jean Bravo, and I'm here today to present our project on adversarial training for tabular data. This was work carried out by Tiago Melu during his master thesis internship at FITSAI in partnership with Institut Superior Tecnico, and it was presented at the KDD workshop on machine learning in finance in 2023 by our colleague, Sergio Jesus. We'll first go over the motivation for our project, then we'll explain our proposed methods and go over some experimental results. Many security sensitive applications such as fraud detection are adversarial in nature. Malicious actors are continuously trying to bypass the existing system in order to pass their activities as legitimate. And this tends to lead to a degradation of performance over time uh, if a model is not kept up to date with this adversarial adaptation. Our main goal with this project is then to preempt this adaptation and to train machine learning models uh, that are more robust to plausible changes in fraud strategies, thus making them harder to bypass. With this, we hope to reduce system maintenance efforts, such as model refreshes. To this end, we propose a method to, real to generate realistic attacks on tabular data. We propose a method to propagate uh, perturbations between the features that an attacker can manipulate and the engineer features that the model uses. And finally, we propose the use of an adversarial training framework to increase the robustness of a machine learning model against a broad range of attacks in an empirical study on credit card fraud detection. We show that this can avoid uh, disastrous losses uh, in the face of some stronger perturbations. We consider a tabular time series setting where you can have a set of raw features that represent uh, an event such as a financial transaction to be classified. These features can be numericals, like the amount of the transaction, can be text fields, like uh, a billing or a shipping address, it can be categoricals or uh, entity identifiers. These are the features that we consider uh, an attacker can manipulate to some degree. From these features, we derive another set of engineered features. And this can be simple um, row-wise transformations that take into account the information of a single row, but they can also take as input multiple rows, uh, such as a temporal aggregation, like a count of all the rows uh, by the same card uh, in a given rolling time window. They can also be higher order transformations, such as uh, transformations uh, of other derived features themselves. It is these engineered features together with some raw features that constitute the input uh, to our machine learning model. Um, it is hard to define uh, meaningful perturbations directly in this engineered feature space and to measure that plausibility. Um, so we choose to instead uh, define the perturbations in terms of the raw features that the attacker has access to and to propagate these to the engineered features. But this can be uh, challenging since uh, some of these features are expensive to compute, like the aggregations mentioned before. One of our proposed solutions to address this is to use an auxiliary model that needs to be trained a priori. We will expand upon this later. Um, with this, and starting from uh, an initial machine learning model that was trained on historical data without any adversarial examples, our ad adversarial training loop consists of the following uh, setup. Uh, so initially, we sample a set of positive perturbations, that is fraudulent perturbations, uh, to perturb. Uh, then we search for the best perturbation using a, a given search method. Then we update our model uh, by including some, some of these adversarial examples in its training set. Finally, we check uh, if uh, the performance in a validation set uh, the adversarial performance that is uh, has stabilized. For generating the perturbed features from a set of raw perturbations, we use the following pipeline. The raw numerical and categorical features that are used in the model, such as card or location features, are changed directly. The changes in temporal aggregations from perturbations to the event timestamps are approximated. For aggregations over entities that include many events, we simply compute the aggregations at regular intervals with the assumptions that they do not change significantly due to any single perturbation. We therefore create a lookup table to look up the new aggregation values for the new perturbed timestamp. For other aggregations, 
We train auxiliary models to regress the perturbations given the timestamp perturbations and the original features for each row. For the changes to aggregations over amounts due to the amount perturbations are computed. Some of these aggregations are also reset when the grouping entity is considered to be changed. Finally, other features that are derived from aggregated or raw features, such as ratios, are recomputed based on the updated values. To measure the magnitude of a perturbation, we assign a cost to each type of raw perturbation. An example is the table below. For discrete perturbations, such as changing the, a categorical value or an entity, we consider a fixed cost. We also consider that location changing has a fixed cost. For other numerical perturbations, the cost is a function of the perturbation size. These costs are meant to reflect a cost or inconvenience to the attacker to deviate from his initially intended behavior. So more expensive or inconvenient perturbations are assigned higher costs. These costs are application dependent and are an input to the method which needs to be derived from expert knowledge. For searching for the best perturbations, we consider a number of discrete optimization algorithms. The simplest one is random search, where we sample a random perturbation of each type and the Bernoulli random variable to decide whether to apply it. The second method we try is stochastic coordinate descent, where we pick a type of perturbation at random, selecting the best perturbation of that type that satisfies a given cost constraint. In a greedy variant of the algorithm, this best perturbation is selected purely based on a model score. We also introduce another variant where the perturbation is selected based on the ratio between the score improvement and the cost increase. The goal is to allow the method to be less greedy in selecting the perturbation, quickly hitting the norm constraint. Finally, the third method we tried is a simple greedy heuristic, where on each iteration, we evaluate the best perturbation of each type and select the best one. That is the one that reduces the model score the most. For the experimental results, we use a proprietary payment processor dataset with 34 million records and 250 features. We split this data set by time to obtain a train validation and test set. Since low false positive rate is a typical operational requirement for a fraud detection system, the main metric we use to evaluate the performance is partial AUC up to 1% false positive rate. On the right, you can see the performance obtained for our baseline light GBM classifier. To find the most effective attack search strategy, we benchmark this against our baseline model. On the right, you can see the success rate defined as the rate of attacks that succeed in lowering the model score below the detection threshold. We find that greedy search strategy tends to outperform other strategies for most constraint values, which leads us to focus on this option for adversarial training. There are two important hyperparameters of the adversarial training loop. We experiment with two different settings for each of these using a fixed norm constraint. The first is the fraction of fraudulent samples that we perturb. And the second is the number of boosting iterations that we train the model for in each adversarial training iteration. We consider training for a fixed number of 20 iterations and training until convergence on an attacked but otherwise fixed validation set. On the left, we can see the adversarial partial AUC at each adversarial training iteration. And on the right, we can see the trade-off between clean and adversarial partial AUC achieved at each adversarial training iteration for each of the combinations. Based on these results, we find that a larger adversarial fraction tends to lead to faster convergence of the training. We also find that training the boosting model until convergence within each iteration tends to be favorable. Overall, we select the smaller adversarial fraction trained to convergence as it leads to the best adversarial PO partial AUC in validation with a loss of only 1% uh, partial AUC in the original historical data relative to the best model. Finally, we compare the model adversarially trained with different norm constraints for the perturbations. 
Here we can see the partial AOC that is obtained for each model when the test set is attacked with perturbations of different norms in the x-axis. On the left, we have results that exclude timestamp perturbations from the perturbation space. And on the right, we have the same results, including these perturbations. We see that the baseline model is extremely vulnerable to perturbations, even with smaller norms. In contrast, the adversarial models are much more robust and don't necessarily benefit from being trained with larger perturbations. Finally, we note that this robustness is obtained at the cost of a small performance penalty on clean historical data. To conclude, we have presented a framework to train adversarially robust models on tabular data, focusing on fraud detection. We have found that greedy search to be the most effective search method for finding the best perturbations. We found that we can prevent big performance drops, especially when faced with larger attacks. And finally, we have found that the penalty uh, that we pay for this robustness in terms of uh, loss of performance on clean data is not larger than 7%. In the future, we would like to perform more extensive study of all the adversarial training hyperparameters. We'd like to explore white box attacks and other search algorithms. And we would like to validate the benefits of adversarial training on more datasets and in practice. Thank you. <laughs>